So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll start from where we left yesterday. That is uh, question number three. Okay. So they're asking uh, for three marks. What are paralinguistic features? Explain their importance with special reference to delivering a presentation. Now, see, if you look at the other part, special reference to delivering a presentation, it is just there to confuse you. All right. Here, you are just supposed to write what are paralinguistic features and why are they important when you make a presentation. That's a simple explanation of this question. So uh, let's say when I'm doing the presentation, why do why should I have a control over the volume of my voice? And depending on the number of participants, I should have a control so that people can listen, so that people are engaged, so people can understand what I'm saying. Why should I be making a good pronunciation so that people understand the word instead of, let's say, if I pronounce, mispronounce words, it will create confusion. Further, people will not remain engaged in your presentation. All right. So if you look at the later half of the question, it is just there so that it might create a confusion that Madam never said where in the presentation. What is paralinguistics to do with presentation? Basically, presentation means you are talking about a topic to an audience with or without a PowerPoint. Right? It can be without a PowerPoint. It can be with a PowerPoint. Now, what are paralinguistic features related to? Paralinguistic features are related to your oral skills, your skills of orally communicating to people. Right? So whether you do a presentation or not, whether you are just giving your speech, then also paralinguistic features will be there. Right? It's like the volume, the quality, the training that you give to yourself, the pauses that you should have. Why should you have a pause? So that people can understand you're trying to emphasize on a point. You're giving time to the people to absorb the information. Right? So here, basically, you're just supposed to define what is paralinguistic features in few sentences let's say three or four sentences, and then explain their importance. So while giving a presentation, you just have to use the word that while delivering a presentation, one must pay attention on the volume of their voice. Why should you pay attention on the volume of your voice? Depending on the number of people, the voice should be low or high. Right? Something like that. So please understand the question properly. Next, if you look at question B, 3B. A meeting was organized to plan the annual tech fest of your institute. Agenda like selection of events, getting finance, and forming the faculty and student committees was discussed during the meeting. Prepare the minutes of the meeting. Here, they are not asking for the agenda. They are asking for the minutes. Right? But they have told you what was the agenda. So they have actually given you certain bits of information. One. What is the title of the minutes? For what was the meeting called? It was called to plan the annual tech fest of, instead of writing your institute, you have to write a name. Let's say annual tech fest of MU, annual tech, tech fest of GPU, annual tech, fe, tech fest of Saurashtra University, SU, Gujarat University, GU. Right? Kindly don't write the meeting title as annual tech fest of your institute. This is one of the common mistakes which students do. When I tell them that the information is given, you use that information, what will they do? Instead of replacing your institute with a name, they will just write your institute. Please mark, this is one of the common mistakes which students make. Not only you, but many students like you in uh, the same semester. Right? When they say your institute, they're giving you the right to write a title. You can write the name of any institute you like. I'm not saying you just write MU or GTU or GU or SU. You can even give your own name. Right? Shah University, Mehta University, Shukla University. Do something, but don't give a name over there. Right? They're giving you a choice. Now, what is in the agenda? The agenda is selection of events. So what do you do when you write the minutes? You have to first write how many people were present. Remember, here they have told us forming faculty and student committee. So you will also have a few students in the list of people who attended the meeting. 
here you will not only have faculty members you will also have certain student members now let's say class representatives one representative from mechanical department one student from civil one because it's an annual tech fest of the entire institute you don't have only one department so at least five to six names of students you have to also include in the list of people who attended the meeting right we already have a structure for the minutes now you draw a table in a tabular format you will write who was assigned what work let's say what kind of event selection of events so few events such as you name a few let's say uh, uh, robo robo war uh, chemo car many events were there and uh, the selection job was given to faculty x he or she will report by whatever date deadline given right student committees the student are supposed to search for student volunteers committee members and by this date right so don't do not forget because they have told over here faculty as well as student committee so there has to be some student representative this is also one of the common mistake right so please read the question very carefully and see the small details which are given next a serious accident had taken place at a company plant few days ago as manager of the plant prepare a detailed report on it with a view to the causes damage done and precautions for future now when they write precautions for future they mean to say your recommendations here the accident has not taken place in the company but a company plant which means a manufacturing unit let's say Uh, a car manufacturing unit and there was some gas leakage or maybe an accidental fire which happened a plant means a manufacturing unit it could be any manufacturing unit right now they have written a company plant so you have to name it again you have to give a name over here let's say i'm talking about the amul dairy mother dairy gopal dairy in rajkot Right, different. I'm talking about a dairy place where production is taking place. Some machinery broke down, so there was a shock circuit, and many things went off. Fire was there. Let's say I take the Maruti uh, manufacturing plant. Let's say the Nano manufacturing plant. If I take the automobile industry, right? you pick up a plant, you name it. Then you follow whatever has been asked. Don't go beyond it. They have asked you the causes. they have asked you what the damage was done and they have asked you precautions for future which can also write as recommendations next is the or question as i said question 1 is compulsory question 2 you have an option in option c to c you have an option you can select in question number 3 you have options for all the three now bus one thing that you need to look at very carefully is if you are attempting question 3 a b c you have to attempt from the same group you cannot attempt 3 a or 3 b and 3 c you have to attempt the bunch right the bunch which is given sometimes a major mistake which students make in the rush to write the paper is that they write one question from the above and let's say two question from below that should not be the case right So let's say now this is letter writing. As I said, unit two and three, please focus more, practice more on unit two and three. I've tried giving you practice in letter writings. The reason is uh, the possibility of questions coming from unit two and three is comparatively more. The weightage is more as compared to the other four units. Right. So a company had ordered fifty computers. On receiving the consignment, you came to know that three computers are not found as per the configuration that you asked for. as a manager write a letter of complaint to the manager abb corporation hyderabad here partial information is provided they have not told which company ordered the computer but they have told from where you have ordered the computer you ordered the computer from abb corporation hyderabad now here partial information is there if you look at the address of the company it is incomplete right? there is no street number there is no pin code partial information means some amount of information is given other information you have to other information you have to assume right make assumption let's say abb corporation street number 1 150 feet ring road hyderabad 
that I have to assume, right? Now see, you have ordered and the order has been received by your company. So here you have to attach your order number or your receiving receipt, right? Let's say a payment receipt or something, right? Here, what kind of information you have to assume? One, you have to write an order number. How will the company track with the help of an order number? Secondly, you have to enclose the receipt that we have made the payment and this was what we confirmed. See, when you do a confirmation with the order of somebody, they'll give you a kind of a summary that you ordered 50 computers with this much, this much, this much. A very simple example, even if you buy from online uh, platforms like Amazon or Flipkart, they'll give you a summary. This is what you are buying. Are you sure? No, they have a description. This many items. This is the price per item and these are the dimensions, etc. Similarly, when you are ordering it, so when you are writing, this is actually a complaint letter or basically more of a adjustment letter. No, you're writing a complaint and asking them to adjust. So you have to tell them that this was the order number. This is what we ordered. Please find the enclosure of this receipt attached here with. Remember, you are not supposed to draw a receipt. All right. You just have to write it in the enclosure. That's it. All right. I hope I'm making sense. I hope this is clear. All right. Now they have got next question. Define the term proxamics and explain intimate space, personal space, social space and public space. They have been generous enough to tell you which are the zones or the spaces in proxemics. So this question, I did not explain. It's clear. At times, what they will say is explain. Instead of writing define proxemics, they will say explain proxemics. So when they say explain proxemics, it is to be understood that you have to talk about the four zones as well. Right? As opposed to write about the four zones as well. Now look at this letter over here. Now if you see, already 10 marks of letter writing they have asked. Three marks over here and seven marks over here. I suppose this brings a lot of clarity from where the questions will be asked more in case we have an offline exam. So already 10 marks. Out of the 70 marks, 10 marks already for letter writing is there. Fine. So here they have given you a little more information as compared to the previous letter. So they've talked about an industry from Baroda who wants to purchase tools from Mumbai, industrial tools. You are supposed to draft an inquiry letter regarding the industrial tool. Right? What is an industrial tool? Tool that you will use in the industry. You're not asking about one tool. Remember when you buy when a company buys, they buy it in a bulk. Let's say I'm buying a 3D printer for my organization. I'll not buy or I'll not inquire for one 3D computer. Uh, sorry, one 3D printer. I'll at least uh, inquire for 10, a minimum 10, right? Because it's a huge uh, equipment, right? So please decide the number of tools that you wish to order based on the equipment that you are ordering. Let's say I'm asking for printing paper. I cannot ask for one bunch. I have to ask for a few boxes. But if I'm ordering or I'm inquiring for an equipment, I cannot order it in thousands. I cannot order a thousand 3D, 3D printers. I can order 10, 20. Right? Or Xerox machines, I cannot order 1000 Xerox machines. Right? Let's say if you take our institution, we have printers. Right? Uh, when the teachers want to print a paper, they have a printer on each floor. So they can inquire about 25 pin printers, inkjet printers I want for my organization. I want 25. All right. So I hope I'm making sense. When you are ordering from one organization to another organization, you have to order in bulk. Right? You're writing a letter of inquiry. That is the uh, letter that you are writing. Then in that case, what you will do is you have to ask for a brochure. You have to ask for discounts. You have to ask for the mode of payment and the time of delivery. You might also add, if you want to make your letter a little more, uh, what do you say, different from the crowd, you may also ask about the return policies. 
right? Every company would have a return policy. If you don't like our machine, you are buying for the first time from company, you have a return policy. What if the consignment or the order that you place is broken? So how do you return it? What is your return policy? 15 days from delivery, one month from delivery, three months guarantee, warranty on the product, whatever. So to make your letter look different from the rest, because there would be many students who are going to appear for this exam. So if you wish to make your letter different, you know, if you wish to score that extra half mark or one mark here and there, this is one of the things that you can add. I've already shared a document where I've given you useful words that you can use for inquiry letters. Right? See, uh, now to give you a little tip on the letter writing. Most of the times, what my experience she, uh, says is, most of the times, they either ask you to draft an inquiry letter or they ask you to draft a complaint and adjustment letter. Most of the times, okay? When I say most of the times, it means 90% of the time. You cannot go beyond that. 100%, I cannot tell you that they will just ask inquiry letter. But most of the times, if you look at uh, things where you have to write more, you have to include little details. The inquiry letter, as well as the adjustment complaint letter has more details to be added if you compare all the letters. It's an order letter, what do you do? You just confirm your order. That this is the things you want. Do you ask for a brochure? Do you ask for the rate of products? You already know that. Right? So the chances of the inquiry letter and the complaint adjustment letter to be asked are more. Fine. Right? It does not mean that the other chances are ruled out. They would be there, but this is more as compared to what you look at the elements in terms of the elements of the letter. When you look at the elements of the letter, let's say in an inquiry letter, you have to ask for a brochure. In the complaint and adjustment letter, you need to have an enclosure. That is, let's say the order receipt or let's say the order number. You have to you know, generate information. So that's why the chances of these two letters to be asked in the examination is comparatively more. Next, question 4A. For e effective communication, one must develop critical and creative thinking process. Discuss. Here, they are not asking you anything else but the importance of communication, uh, sorry, importance of critical and creative thinking in the process of communication. Why do you need to be creative and why do you need to be critical? Right, so you have to just discuss the importance of being a critical thinker and the importance of being a creative thinker. That's for a three mark question. Okay. Next, we have got what is group discussion as a part of the recruitment process? Which key skills are essential for successful participation in the group discussion? Now here they're basically asking you how does, how does the recruitment process happen with the help of group discussion? So you can say group discussion has become an inevitable part of any recruitment process. Group discussions, we had actually, if you remember, uh, we had taken a setup that in the venue of a given company, uh, 10 people are divided into groups of 10, given a topic, and they take group discuss. Now, which key skills are essential for successful participation in group discussion? They are nothing but the factors on which the factors on which people will judge you in the group discussion. So, good listening skills, leadership qualities, team behavior, communication skills, etc. would be a part of this answer. Right? See, they are asking you key skills for successful participation. When will you be able to participate successfully? You'll be able to participate successfully when you know the points on which you are judged. You are judged on your knowledge. You are judged on your communication skills, inclusive of the listening skills. They are judged on how you behave in a group, right? So if you if you are not behaving properly, they might not even consider you. So these are the skills that you need to have. Now the last uh, question for C is elaborate the following verbs for self development. Now I see I had told you that they are action words or verbs that they are being used. They will give you randomly any five. There are 12 of them. So what is reading, learn, listen, remember, and think? Right? Here you have to write a few 
lines let's say a passage or a paragraph each so what is reading what do you mean by reading try to tailor the answer according to the need do not try to fill in everything what is written in the ppt the always in the ppt which i have provided you for reference purpose remember it's reference for reference purpose will always carry a little more information than required right a little more information than required now you have to tailor make it you have got a seven mark question five verbs you have to answer so try to tailor it in that manner next is define negotiation skills what are the various stages of the negotiation process now here when they ask you the stages we are going to write the six steps of negotiation if you remember we have done six steps of negotiation getting to know each other right you just don't jot down they have not asked you to list it so getting to know each other and then that's the title of the step number 1 or stage 1 and then one sentence that's how you will write this answer next you have got write a brief note on persist and dream very simple two verbs asked two marks each so you have to tailor it in that way next define engineering ethics explain significance of its study with reference to an individual and an organization now here you are supposed to talk about engineering ethics one that the definition you will give secondly you are supposed to talk about why is engineering ethics important or the scope of engineering ethics right let's say why what are the reasons that ethics should be there a few reasons are that an ind individual can stop mal practicing right ethics add act i'm sorry ethics act as guidelines so that you can follow the true things influence of external factors can be stopped to a greater extent if you are following ethics these are a few examples that i have given you may mix and write because it is a seven mark question you have to write appropriately over here i hope i am clear till now i'll move on to question 5 and the paper comes to an end okay finally all right write a note on ethical dilemma and steps to resolve it so what is an ethical dilemma it is actually a conflict between two equally uh, lucrative ideas and the steps to resolve it there are three steps analyze the consequences look at the people who are been affected and then take the decision right so explain the steps in a one or two sentences not more next write a note on the etiquette that one should follow while receiving or placing a call for business this is basically telephone etiquette next what are the techniques of effective time management explain the advantages of time management here first you have to tell what is time management next you have to write what are the techniques and then you have to list the advantages in the or question you have explain various approaches for making moral choices so i i, I hope you know the three approaches the virtue approach the duty framework or the duty approach and the consequentialist approach right for making a moral choice we had that next why is it important to learn to say no and how can it be expressed politely here you are supposed to write learning to say no and and how do you wish to know like how do you wish to learn how to say no and then we have tips of dealing with or tips of expressing a no that's what you write over here and last thing is how will you prepare for a business trip abroad what manners and etiquettes will you follow it is basically etiquettes to be followed for a foreign business trip right learn a few colloquial phrase, phrases learn their temporal practices try to greet and address people properly giving gifts and souvenirs according to the norms over there keep yourself updated with the local uh, happenings be careful how you handle social media 
also do not forget to bring back souvenirs for your colleagues back at home right so with this uh this was last year's winter 2019 november 2019 paper that we have had now uh, if you have ha if you are having any kind of doubt you supposed to solve doubts any kind of doubts that you have the no doubts means either i was too good in explaining or i was not too good in explaining any doubts that we have no doubt no <laughs> wait fine so i've tried to uh, talk you through the question paper the reason being that uh, th these are the different ways in which they can ask the question and you have to tailor your answers according to what has been asked for how many marks uh, one thing that we should always keep in mind is it is very necessary to complete the paper instead of leaving an entire question also this options that you have you know when we have options it creates more kind of a confusion so try to be very clear about where you have to write less and get more marks please do smart work let's say when they talk to me about proxemics and for three marks so i should choose a question like proxemics so that i get three marks easily and they've also mentioned the names you don't have to remember things all right so a few questions that are really important one is the process of communication it is bound to be asked and two lawrence kolberg theory of moral development why because these are the two questions the uh, one of the few reasons for this two questions to be asked is these are the two questions which have diagrams diagrams in the sense they have they have actually a chart that you can present right so these two questions are important from that per perspective now uh, paying attention more on unit number 2 for letter writing if you see uh, uh, almost uh, 14 to 18 marks 1 for 14 to 18 marks i'm not counting the or question i'm counting the marks which you get for the attempting part 14 to 18 marks given to report writing proposal writing technical description and letter writing and minutes of the meeting and that part right so try and uh, practice as much as possible you can also go to other questions you know uh, that's why uh that's why you should practice more and i i have given you access to all the students to whom i have given the questions for letter writing for practice purpose you may write i'm not asking you to write and send it to me but for practice purpose you may always uh, take examples of other questions what if this question is asked you know practice purpose don't you wish that i check it for you i don't mind you may always drop an email that madam i've written this letter how much marking do i get or where do i uh, you know need to improvise myself all right so for that purpose it may happen look at the other questions of students which which have been assigned to other students so that you can practice well now not only today but whenever you have any doubts uh, before the exam
kindly uh, drop an email or a message uh, if you when you sit sit down to study and prepare for the exam right uh, you may always drop a message uh, at, at an appropriate time so that i'll answer that to you right so as of now as, as you do not have any doubts the syllabus was completed quite earlier we also completed uh, solving the question paper we also did our swot analysis so with this i complete uh, whatever i could have to the best of my knowledge with regard to etc subject i have tried to complete and cover that all fine so if we do not have any doubts what i'll do is i'll take the attendance there are still a few of us who have not uh, yeah thank you somebody reminded me about you may email it to my mail id which i am also typing in the chat box in case you do not have it that's the email id whatever is pending please drop it uh, attach it as an attachment and drop an email now because i cannot be sharing the links every now and then those who have not completed their book review what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to submit a powerpoint along with a short video of you explaining it okay because the powerpoint which carries marks it carries marks in a way where you make a ppt for the ppt you get marks and for the explanation also you get marks and this is for the regular students d2d D students do not worry for you the assignments will be given to you at appropriate time right so i i hope whosoever you will take a proactive approach and you would not ask me to remind you over and over that you have not submitted you have not submitted and you submit the work by the end of this week so you do not have any problems when we take the viva right you may submit it on the email i have already drafted my email id in the chat box save it somewhere if you are not intending to do it today but save it write it somewhere so that whenever you have to do it you don't have to search for the email and let's take the attendance enrollment number 2 5 Eight, nine, ten, twelve, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Uh, dear student this is for the regular students for d2d D students i'll take the names don't worry Fifty-eight, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy-two, seventy-three, eighty-two, eighty-five, eighty-nine, ninety-one, ninety-six, hundred. 
Twenty one, twenty five, twenty six, thirty one, one thirty four, and one forty four. All right. I'll just call out absent numbers one for the regular students. B two B students, please wait. I'll tell you. Right. Absent numbers are nine, twelve. Nine is present. Twelve, twenty-four, forty-seven, sixty-seven, seventy-three, eighty-nine, hundred and two. One twenty one and one twenty five. Right. One twenty one is present. Okay, I'll mark you present, Shubham. Fine. So, D two D students, please remain in the meeting. Other students may leave. Thank you, class. Have a nice day. D two D students, please remain in the meeting. Uh, please wait. I'll uh, take your attendance. I'm opening the sheet. Just give me one minute. Okay, not more than that. So they were Om Joshi, Mihir Gandhi, Hansi Parmar, uh, Nishita Mirja, Shubham. Khanda Diya, Shubham Khanda Diya. Rishab Gohil, Paras Kanzaria, 
समीर जोशी सुनीता वघेला शिज प्रेजेंट दिव्या परमार पार्थ कानपरा अरिता भिमानी सावन राज्य गुरु आस्था जव्या निर्जर यात्रा विराज गामी निशा भाग्या शिफा नागवदरिया वॉट हर्षिल वदगामा देव गधेरा यश राणिंगा इंजल चंदाराना जय मनन भाग्येश अदर क्लास राइट anybody who is left out all right fine thank you class have a nice day thank you you may leave the meeting